So with truth tables, this is where we actually get into the nitty gritty of statements. Now we're going to be taking real written expressions and statements and actually see if there's some sort of valid reasoning to them. So when, you know, we can recall when we argue with people, let's say in politics, I mean, this has been such an eventful past year, you know, I'm sure you've had many of those conversations and, um, and at least now when you go into those conversations after this um, section, you're going to look at what people say a little differently. Um, even the media, the media is the worst, right? Like what are they saying sometimes, right? So you're going to listen to those statements and you're going to be able to analyze them in a logical way where you can determine yourself whether it's valid reasoning. We're going to use the word or, we're going to use the word and, we're going to use the word if and then and not. And we're going to really be able to break down written expressions and arguments and just see if there's validity. And really, if you're in speech and debate, um, they tend to use this a lot. Lawyers, uh, law school, if you take the LSAT, there's a whole section of logic because we need the logic of, val you know, we need that part of valid reasoning no matter what. Even if a lot of things are emotional in life, we need we need a part of us to have some sort of logic to make valid, re to see if there are and have valid reasoning to some of the things that we say or think. So it's a, it's value. It's really a value. I hope that you get out of this. So let's go ahead and try to start. Let's first start. What is a truth table, right? So the truth table displays the truth value of a statement, which is going to be true or false. Compound or conditional by obtaining the truth values of each statement, if each statement is true or not, right? In the compound or conditional statement. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the things. Um, and I also put the set notation in there so uh, you could see, you know, like uh, the connection again. So again, we had the word and before. Right, and we looked at A and B, and we said that was the intersection. Those are common elements. Well, now that's going to be this symbol, and it looks like the A for and, except without the little A. So that's how you can remember it. And we use A and B. Notice that it's a little um, upside down sharp V in the corner. But remember that the cap on intersection was you know, like a upside down U and this is an upside down V. But other, um, in any case, they were both upside down. So that's why you can remember intersection and, you know, and the word and. And or, notice is the actual look like a V between the two statements. And we use the written expression or, and we had a cup, right? It looked like an actual U, and so now we have an actual V, and so you can remember it like that. Not, we discussed this before, the word not, not A, with the complement, that's the same idea, but we're going to use the tilde, the little squiggly line. So, and there are, in other classes, you may have discovered that you're like, we use this for the logic, and not the, you know, so in this one, we'll use the tilde. And we only do that to separate the ideas of logic and sets. Even though they're very closely related, um, we just want a different like symbol so we know that, oh, this is we're dealing with logic here and then dealing with sets. Okay, so you can always refer to this and tab this in your notes for those symbols. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the true uh, true tables for these. Just like we have the Venn diagrams, the basic for Venn diagrams, we're going to have the basic, you know, for truth tables. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the first one. So the first thing we need to do is say that, okay, if A is a statement and B is a statement, we need to be able to tell whether the statements are true or false, right? So it's either going that A is, Statement A will be true and statement B will be true. Okay, so they both could be true, right? Or what? what's the other alternative? Well, it could be that statement A is true and statement B is false. 
right? And then you're like, whoa, well, couldn't statement A be false? I said, yeah. And B be true? Absolutely. And then you, someone else will say, well, can't they both be false? I mean, that's straight up lying, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so this is the basic combinations that you'll be using for all your truth tables with two statements. Two statements will have four rows, two columns here, and they'll have, you know, I always say double T, double F, and then alternating true, false, true, false, true, false. And the first two columns with two statements will always look like this, okay? So make sure you note that it's really important. These will always look the same no matter what. The statements could be called, you know, Q and P or whatever, but it doesn't matter if you have two statements and you're making a truth table, it has to be these two first columns in which will have double true, double false, alternating true, false, true, false. Okay, so one way I like to look at this is let's say um, you work for um, Microsoft, right? And you, or some sort of tech company, right? And so you, you're an assistant to the CEO and your job is to just do whatever is necessary to make the CEO more successful, right? So let's say all the CEO wants is coffee in the morning first thing when they walk in. And so if they want coffee, they say, I, I want cream. So you have cream in the coffee and I want sugar, sugar and cream. Okay, and some of you have take your coffee that same way. So just think of and as working at, and I always say this, as Microsoft. So you're the CEO assistant to Microsoft, who's very strict. Um, you know, you, they work in cubicles. They don't have gardens, right? They just very, you come in, do your work and leave, right? That kind of business. And so no matter what though, in the morning, you're always gonna get your boss some coffee. And the rule is if you don't put coffee, if you don't put in the coffee, cream and sugar, so the word and, you have to have both, right? Remember and means both. If it's not in that intersection, you're fired. So no matter what you're gonna put in it, you always have to go find sugar and you always have to find cream and put it in that coffee, whether you go to five different floors or not. And if you don't, you're fired because that's all I want out of you is a perfect cup of coffee, right? So you go, right? And so now what you're saying is, well, if if the first case is, okay, so my I put cream and I put sugar. Those are both true, I put both. Are you gonna be fired? No. Great, you still have a job. Now, let's say you put, the next day you say, okay, yeah, I put cream, you walk in, and he's like, where's the sugar? You're like, oh shoot, I forgot the sugar. So did you, you put cream, is true? Did you put uh, sugar? No, it's false. Are you gonna be fired? You need both. Yep, false. What about um, here? You go in, uh, did you put cream? No, false. Did you put sugar? Yep. So false and true. Did you put both? No. Did he fire you or he or she fire you? Yep, fired. And then you walk in, you're so mad. You gave both, you gave black coffee. You didn't even care anymore. <laughs> yes, you were definitely fired. <laughs> So you can see how strict and the word and it, it has to be both. It has, both statements have to be true in order for the statement um, entirely to be true. If there's any sort of faults happening in either statement, then it automatically goes to false. So this is the default for two statements and and that it goes true. The only case that it's true is if both are true. And that's just because of the intersection. Now let's go. So then you get, you get fired and you're like, okay, now I'm going to go apply to Google because I can't handle how strict everything is over here. And Google, you know, if you ever read about Google, they have gardens, no one has cubicles, they sit in a garden, they sit outside, their office is an open office, it's very open and inclusive. And so, 
here you work you're an assistant for the CEO once again and once again all they want is cream and sugar in their coffee but they're much more lenient they said okay you know I know sometimes it's um, hard to find um, cream and sugar because everyone's you know drinking coffee here so as long as I have cream or sugar I'll be fine so cream or sugar right so now the statements are still I want cream I want sugar so if you get both I mean it's a delight for that person but really um, if you have one or the other you know they're they're satisfied which is so great so let's do this. So now, um, your first day, you put cream and um, cream and sugar. True for both. Wow, what a delight! Are you fired? No way. Here, um, you put cream but no sugar. So cream, you, true. Did you put sugar? No. But did you get fired? No. They're like, oh, this tastes great. The next day, you're like, oh, I'll mix it up. No cream, but I gave sugar. Right? Are you fired? No, they're cool. You work at Google, right? Let me put Google so you remember. But now when you work at, you're working at Google and they said, you you gave me black coffee, blah, and they spit it out and everyone's looking at them. Do you think you're going to get fired? At least written up, right? Yeah. So the only way for two statements and or to be false is if both statements are false. You gave no cream, no sugar. But or is kind of a little more lenient because remember or is the union, right? It has to be one or the other or both. So one or the other or both. So that way you have only one false in the or statements with two statements. And then with and, remember it's in the intersection and it has to be both and that way you only have one true. Okay, so those are the generic ones that you'll always use for and and or. I mean, just circle these because I'll write them on an index sheet. In the appendix in the back of these notes, there's a sheet with all the truth tables that you would need just to do any type of truth table problem. So look at those, but these are what you'll really need. The next one we're going to do is not. So not is, um, you know, we'll just do one statement here. Not is exactly the compliment. So whatever it not A is, is the result. So here A is going to be either true or false. That's just the way statements work. And then not A would be, well, what is not true? If something's not true, it's false. And something that's not false is true. And so that's the way the not works. You're just going to give the opposite truth value. And because there's only two times true and false, it's so easy. So not is always so great because it's like, oh, not true, false, not false, true. Perfect, right? So um, as long as you know the truth value, it's really super fast to do the not A, the compliments. Okay, so and the next one I want to just conclude with is if... You're like, well, I usually don't have just have two say. I like, I talk a lot. I have a lot of statements, right? And so let's do one. In this class, we're not going to do more than three statements because after that, it gets quite, you know, consuming, time consuming. So let's go ahead and look at what a three statement would be. So here's a, b, and then a, like a c statement. There we go. So here's A. So now we need to think about a combination of three. So the first most obvious one is always when they're all true. And then you would go through each one where like, okay, so let's say these two are true and C is false. Or how about when A and C are true and B is false? Or how about when A is true and then these other two are false? So you kind of see the pattern that's happening. The other case is when A's are all false, right? So now the next set with false. So we have um, false and let's say B is true and C is true. And then we have A is still false, but we have um, B is still true and then C is false. And then A is false and then these get a little longer. And um, how about when A is false and B is false, 
and C is true, and then how about A is the last false for A, and false for B, and false for C. All of them are false. So notice here that the pattern still remains here with three statements, except now we have um, more options, right? Because of that third column, we have to include more. So notice now we have four trues, four falses in a row. Instead of double true, double false, we have quadruple trues, quadruple falses. So it just doubled up. Notice that B's become double trues, double false. And C is alternating true, false, true, false, true, false. So if you would just want to remember that it's like half split true false in that first column, right? It's half. And then double, you know, double true, double false, and then alternating. That's a good way to remember them. Um, or just use this as reference. Um, and then at that point, you could do any type of statements you want over here. You know, and that will include some true values in the column. So you can combine the three statements any way you like. So there is a sort of pattern here. And and the, I just want to tell you that the pattern with statements and the truth values, like notice that there was, um, when there was uh, two statements, that gave um, four, four scenarios, right? True, 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 false, false, true, false, false, like four scenarios, four rows. And then when we got to three statements, that gave us eight different scenarios, right? Eight rows. Okay, so, um, you know, we can kind of predict now what's going to happen in the four, if I had four statements, right? Because notice that we only have two choices, right? True or false, right? And two statements. Two squared is four. So notice I have here two choices, true or false, but three statements. Two cubed is eight. So if I still have two choices, true, false, but four statements, then I'll have two to the fourth, which is 16 choices. So, you know, you can see how it just keeps growing exponentially. So once again, I want you to notice that this power on the two matches how many statements you have. And then the base two comes from that you have true, false, two choices. And we're going to get it more into like these type of patterns. Um, in chapter 10 with probability but I just kind of wanted you to notice like there was this isn't arbitrary that I picked eight and I picked four right it's actually mathematically concluded that when you have two choices and four or two options or three options or four options that's the power, the choices are the base and the power is the options. So, um, and then if we had five statements, it would be two to the fifth and then so on, that's the pattern. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a truth table for the compound statement, not A and B or not B. So let me rewrite this, so not A and B or not B. So notice that we have A, B, which are two statements, right? So that means we'll have two statements and they will have four options or four rows. So let's go ahead and draw the first two columns. First two columns is always what it is, right? So A, B. And it's always going to be true, true, false, false for that first one and alternating true, false, true, false. Now I'm going to extend this top row header a little differently, a little longer. 
and um, now make the next one and start writing these pieces, these connectives. So the first one I'm going to do is not A. So again, I'm just going to look at the column. Here's not A, and then here's A. So let's just look at those pieces. So what is not true? Well, false. What is not true? False. What is not false? True. True. So not, remember the knots are supposed to be pretty quick. But now if I wanted to connect that with B, right, so I would have not A and B, then I have to use now not A and B. So I could use this little cheat sheet here where I know the only time that two statements will be true is if both of the truth values are true in that row. So we don't really look at the header really, we look at by row. So we look at the first row, truth values. The header, we just identify the operation. So the operation is and, so I just look for, okay, well, everything that has a false in it is going to be false except the one that's true. So the only one, the row that has true all truth values to be true, then that's true. Other than that, any falses are going to make it false. That's the and. So just remember that. Don't really con concentrate on the header, but just the truth values themselves. So here, I'm going to have um, and this row and B. So let's keep it straight. So now I'm going to have false and true. Well, if it has a false in it and it's and, it has it's automatically false, right? Because I didn't bring cream or sugar, right? Did I bring cream? No, but I did bring sugar. Yes. No, we don't care that it's not A. Like it, we don't care. We're looking only at the truth values. We're looking for double trues in order for it to be true when it's and. So anything with the faults in it here is going to automatically be false. Any of them. So true and false has to be false because you didn't bring one cream or sugar. One of the others, right? False or false? Well, you definitely got fire there because you didn't bring any. You just brought black coffee. True and true, yeah, you brought both. Um, false, you didn't bring the sugar, but you brought the cream, right? So you got fired, false. So notice any of the statements with the false statement all had false truth values. The only, uh, an and, only true is going to be when both truth values are true. So the next one is um, not B. That would be the next piece that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and put not B and leave a little room here like this. Now let's just go ahead and go to not B. And um, look at the truth value and just do the opposite, right? If, what is not true? False. Right, so these two are false. Um, what is not false? True. So these two are true. So you're just doing the opposite. And now we can connect everything. So now we want we wanted this, not A and B or not B. So the or can go here in between. And we do that so it looks like our statement. Notice that this now looks like our header. And so we can put the final answer here. So the very last operation connecting statements is going to be the answer. So you just have to make sure every piece of this is in this header. So look at, we had not A, we had not A and B, we had not B, and then the OR. So we just need every single piece. And the very last piece we do is going to be the result. So in between here means that I am going to connect now not A and B or not B. So now I work at Google 
And now I know that everything's going to be true here, except the ones where I gave black coffee again, right? If I gave black coffee with no cream or sugar, I got fired. So with or, I know the only faults I'm getting, everything's true, everything's true. The only faults I'll get is if I both are false. And again, we don't care about the header, we only care about the operation and the truth values, okay? So once again, the operation is or, and we only look at truth values. The only time an or is false is if both of the truth values are false. So let's take a look at this first row. Notice the first row, they are false. It is false. And if I see one of them, t the truth values to be true, it's automatically true because I brought cream or sugar and I was fine. I didn't get fired. So here, I bought cream and not sugar. I didn't get fired, still true. And again, the only time I'm gonna put false is when both are false. So here, also true, because I brought the cream, not the sugar. And so um, this is now the final answer. Here we go. So the truth table for this compound statement is this is the whole truth table and the final truth values for this statement will be false, true, true, true. So you'll build this truth table for every type of compound statement and then um, the last operation will be that final truth value to the statement. And so here we could see that there is a case where it's false. So if you were a lawyer and you were in the courtroom and you were arguing on the basis of your client and you knew that there were some holes, right? There was going to be a time where the opposing, um, you know, lawyer would might have a room for valid reasoning against yours because that, that's what that fault says, that you don't have a full truth table where every argument that you give is true, meaning you're right. <laughs> if there is one that's false, then there is a little hole in your uh, investigation, right? And there is a part where the opposing lawyer could use that against you to help their client win. But it looks like you would probably win because in most cases here, three out of the four times, you're right, you're going to have a true. But this little piece here is the ace in the hole for the opposing team, right? And um, and that could re, uh, you know, be an argument against you and could work. So these are the kind of logic pieces that we need, especially if you're going to be in law or debate or some sort of communications where you want to be able to are you correctly and have reasoning so um, in this case that this argument was brought up like oh well I got you here you would have to say you know I don't disagree I agree with that you're right but blah 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 blah, blah. so and that's how argument works